whether you know the commercial property you have chosen or you're about to choose uh, is right for you. Hi there, this is Helen Taron again from Helen. Property Roadshow, you're here with Helen Tarrant. You're putting your you're putting your faith and your beliefs or, or into the hands of an expert, like a bias agent like myself or anyone else, uh, or an educator to help you walk out and find the right commercial property for you. But you might be presented with one or two or three and you decide on one and you decide that not, that's not gonna be good enough or you decide that's really good and decide to go ahead with it. But how do you know that's the right one for you, right? A lot of people ask that question, right? There's expertise from doing deals every single day that other people aren't seeing. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Firstly, uh, if you're looking at properties that are, say, in regional areas, there's certain metrics and certain things you have to look at. So the history of the tenants, the retenancy rate, rate per square meter, but also the likelihood of versatility and other type of tenant that will retain it into this property in the future, the length of the vacancy, but most importantly, yield, but previous yield, the current yield and where it's going to, right? That's that's sort of regional. But then you compare that regional back with the metrics of Metro, right? And in Metro, you look at, you know, the type of property, the type of yields and how the market's trending and you see where the difference is and then you make a decision, right? But a lot of people don't see that because you're not seeing it on a macro level. You're seeing it on a micro level and that's not enough when you're trying to make a decision, right? But the other thing is, I'll talk about a couple of scenarios like what if you get a property that's a retail tenancy, right? Would you... Most people go, oh, no, I don't want to be in retail. But the certain type of people, a lot of my Asian clients, a lot of people who have already invested in retail before will continue to invest in retail. They'll pick up an extra yield ahead of the market and when the market corrects itself uh, and retail all of a sudden becomes stronger because when people are going out again and there's going to be a surge of people going out, people are going to take better leases and they're going to get that confidence back. Um, they'll get a kick in their capital growth and also in their rental increases as well. So. How do you have the foresight to do that? Most people will reject it on face value, but being a good buyer's agent is actually being able to see three steps ahead, right? And this is one thing I do pride myself on, is to be able to see three steps ahead and see where your portfolio will be in five, 10, 20 years time. And it's not about buying the one property, it's actually about the portfolio into the future, which is really important. So in that scenario, you have to look at uh, the the history of where retail has been in the past 10 years and where it's likely to end up and you're gonna to have to look at the trends right and it's also nothing beats pounding the pavement and knowing the area there's certain areas where it's two streets away from the main area is absolutely empty we wouldn't do it there's certain places uh, we wouldn't do retail uh, unless it's a particular type of tenant so you've got to understand you got to be able to have that broad macro knowledge, right? So, I, in fact, I would favor retail at the moment because I think people who are investing in retail are getting above what people are seeking uh, and um, they're going to end up with a good kick in the back end in terms of higher capital growth and higher rents to come. So they'll reap the rewards while well, most people are seeing short sightedness and want to buy warehouse properties. So that's what I'm seeing. Uh, and a lot of people will disagree with that because they want to go with the trends. They want to go with security. Security isn't always good. Security means that you're going to get same return as the market or less because you are playing it safe, right? What about office space? Now, a lot of people say, no, I don't want to buy office space. I don't, especially I don't want to buy a vacant office space because office spaces and vacant office spaces are no-nos because you just don't know what the market is going to be like. You don't know where with COVID people are coming back to the office or they're not coming back to the office. But what I'm saying to you is people absolutely will come back to the office just in a different format. But offices also suit a hell of a lot of other people. So you can go with allied health for ground floor, go with government tenants, go for medical tenants. Now we're seeing medical centers moving from ground floor to up floor, upper floors into office spaces because it's so much cheaper they're halving their rent right and we're all in the business of you know, making a profit so office space, space will come back but just in a different format it'll be more versatile the larger office space open plan will actually be broken down it will probably be smaller spaces so versatility and breaking it up into multiple tenancies is absolutely in uh, there is an opportunity out there but how do you know it's the right property it comes back to this you have to know your risk profile right would you sacrifice Security for return. If you will, and if you want absolute security, you will get the lowest return. That's always what happens, right? That's money in the bank, bonds, that's what it is, right? But if you're willing to take a little bit more risk, 
you get a little bit more higher yield. A lot, a lot more risk, a lot higher yields. So balance your risk and balance your returns. That's how you know that's the right property for you. Don't worry about the property type, don't worry about the location, don't worry about the type of tenant. Look at your risk and the returns, right? If you want something ultra secure, you're at three to four percent. And what is that? That is Metro Sydney property, allied health or medical type tenants or warehouse type tenants, right? That is the right property for you. Something with a little bit more risk, something that you said, look, if there's a vacancy of three months, I can cope with it. Or if there's something is, um, if the tenant, if I have to give the tenant some rent relief, I can do that. Or I'm willing to do something that other people aren't. That's your retail type tenants. That's your retail temp type tenants in Metro fringe areas where you will get some Somewhere around five percent so that would be your Sydney Melbourne uh, maybe potentially five and a half to uh, you know to five and a half maybe somewhere even close to your six percent so that's where you'll get you'll get that um, the next level is where you'll really want something that's got an uplift you've got a high risk tolerance higher risk tolerance not the highest but the higher risk tolerance which means that you want some income you can deal with it, as long as the property breaks even or just breaks even even if it's negative by ten thousand or twenty thousand it's absolutely okay but you actually Actually, as long as it's self-sustaining for most of it, you're fine. The whole point is that you want to engineer the, the growth, the cash flow, and that's going to take time. And you've got time, you've got uh, time, you've got process, and you're able to do it, right? And that's absolutely, uh, and you are fine with having the risk of maybe a longer tenancy and not having the media cash flow. Now, ultra risk, if you're saying, look, I come from a development background, I can be able to take ultra ultra risk because if the thing fails and you know I've got other cash flow stuff then buy vacant property vacant property is absolutely the property for you because there's massive massive upsides in the future and now by office space vacant office space you will reap the rewards in three to five years to come where other people are too risk too risk averse to do that so that's depending on your levels and the type of property once you get into that point then you break that down a little bit more you break down into the type of tenants you like you type of tenants you prefer and of course then the lease right if you prefer to go with a longer lease then obviously you are going to get um, a, a lower yield right so again it's a security versus risk again so examine that then you'll know which is the right commercial property for you and how do you pick the right commercial property when you have two against each other and you might think that you know one's higher rent than the other one you know um, the tenant has a, an unusual incentive or the location is not that great uh, and you're thinking I'm gonna have one over the other but let me tell you something else um, always go broader, always look broader, beyond yourself, beyond the, the, the area, beyond the city. Look at what the macro environment is doing. So look at what Brisbane is doing rather than a suburb in Brisbane. Look at what Gold Coast is doing rather than a suburb in Gold Coast. Look at what the level of property is doing. So look at the, the trend in warehousing, the trend in retail, the trends in, in office spaces rather than just your one office space located in Brisbane or South Australia or wherever it is, is right? Look at the economic data, look at the demographic movement. Those things will help you to choose the right properties in the right areas when you're trying to choose two. But the other thing is don't let your own preconceptions ruin the deal, right? It can be a really great deal and someone else will pick it up. And classic example I had was a, a, a guy coming in wanting an uplift. He had properties and some of them were on shorter leases, some on longer leases. Um, he really wanted the security, great cash flow. And this was a property in regional Queensland but he was too scared to move forward. Someone else comes along, buys the property, within four, uh, basically, about six months, actually not four months, that's, in about four months, we sort of swapped over the tenants for them. About six months later, we actually got an offer on the property by a developer, so they've made $400,000 out of it, right? We always knew that was gonna be the extra strategy, but the person buying it doesn't have macro outlook. They're very micro, right? That's what you wanna avoid. If you wanna choose the right commercial property, you gotta, firstly, don't let your preconceptions ruin the deal. Secondly, understand your risk tolerance. Thirdly, be realistic. Your risk has to balance out uh, your, uh, your risk and security has to balance out the yield and returns in the market. And don't you know try to get a nine percent with a medical tenant in Metro Sydney, right? That doesn't exist, right? If you want to be have that ultra security, that's a three to four percent return, and you just have to accept that. That's just what it is, right? And also then understand that when you're comparing properties to, to properties, they're not apples comparing apples. They're always their individual circumstances. There was always great things and bad things about one over the other, but ultimately uh, let listen to the professional opinions. Look at the macro view, don't let your preconceptions, and do some research. Also, a lot of the research are not going to be done up front, a lot of them are going to be done during due diligence. So also let the process 
happen. Do the due diligence. I had so many clients who say to me, oh, I want to know this, this and this. We haven't done DD yet. There's a lot of things that we're not going to do, be able to do until we get a strata report or a pest and building report. We get the tenant ledger or we're going to be able to cite the property. We're not going to be able to do that same thoroughness of uh, due diligence and come back to you and say, yes, this is a goer. But you've got to have a launch, right? You can't try to line up all your ducks before you launch into the first perfect commercial property because if you do, you'll be waiting forever. So I know this has been a long video. I know I've talked a lot about what is right, what is wrong. But if you are looking for someone to handhold you, someone to build your portfolio, someone to work with you and develop a cash flow as well as a growth strategy to create true financial freedom forever using commercial property, reach out to me, helentarrant.com or helen at commercialpropertycashflow.com.au. Let's jump on a strategy call. Let's talk about your financial freedom journey. Let's make it happen.